Hey everybody, I promised on Facebook yesterday I was going to, or I threatened, that I was going to make a uh, video on uh, this nonsense people like to post this time of year, especially in the current political climate, about uh, Jesus being a, a refugee in uh, Bethlehem. And um, it happens a lot this year. People like to take a, a story they don't know anything about. They've only learned from uh, nativity scenes, I guess, or Christmas specials. And, uh, you know, I don't have a particular beef with, uh, I guess I do. I got a beef with liberals and conservatives, especially the fringe on both sides. But I think this one in particular is being used to, I guess, have some type of commentary on immigration <coughs> and such. And, uh, and usually they're just idiotic. So, um, you know, I, I don't have any paperwork in front of me. I'm not uh, uh, going to read you Bible verses or anything like that. But I just figured I'd kind of clear clear this up so that, you know, if you are planning on using this for some type of evidence for a political point you're trying to make, you at least won't come across as a complete idiot. So, uh, no, Jesus was not a refugee in Bethlehem. Bethle Bethlehem was his father's hometown. And it was about 90 miles from Nazareth. And assuming that uh, Joseph and Mary uh, went there from Nazareth, which we have no reason to really assume, it was a trip of about 90 miles, which was not an easy trip. I mean, you know, she was pregnant. Uh, we don't know how pregnant. We don't know how long uh, they were in Bethlehem, but it was quite a while. Um, they didn't get there that night. It would have taken them just a regular travel, probably maybe a week or so to, uh, to get there. And they had friends along the way. So, uh, neither did they, uh, get to Bethlehem and get turned away at the motel six. Uh, uh, that's one of the ones that gets me. Uh, and a lot of that's because people don't understand both, uh, Middle Eastern practices and they don't understand that there weren't motel sixes. Um, Bethlehem wasn't a big city. It wasn't on a major highway. And so it was, uh, there would not have been any, what we call inns there. Um, when, when the scripture says that there was no room at the inn, that's a translation of a word. And that word is translated, um, the word inn appears in, in the New Testament a couple of times. This is not the word that is the same word that is translated as in, uh, in the story of the Samaritan, who the good Samaritan who came across a uh, uh, Hebrew who had been beaten and um, basically left for dead. And he took him carefully and took him to an innkeeper and paid his uh, you know, fee and said, take care of him. And if you incur any other cost, uh, I, when I come back, I'll pay those too. <laughs> That's an inn that you're thinking about, like a... a a room or a place where people would pay to stay uh, on a, on a trip. There were very likely none of these in uh, in Bethlehem. The word "in" uh, uh, is, as it's translated there, basically means a guest room. And um, since we know that Joseph and Mary were in Bethlehem for some time, because the scripture says that when the days of her pregnancy had come full, so she had been there a while, that um, when the actual birth happened, there was no room in the guest room. This word "in" is also translated uh, when we when we see the the uh, the apostles looking for an upper room uh, to have a meeting or to have the Passover. This is a, a uh, basically it's a guest room in a Middle Eastern house, and the room wasn't big enough. There was no room to keep the baby in the guest room. And so they laid the baby in a manger. This was not in a stable. It was not in a barn. The way that a Middle Eastern house was set up back then is you had an entryway that led into the lower level. And they would bring the animals into the, uh, into the house. Uh, they, they were brought in for heat. They were brought in to protect them from predators, to protect them from theft. And you know, they lived differently than we live today. Uh, it was quite common 
uh, throughout the Middle East, all the way up into Russia and Europe at the time, to uh, keep your animals in the house during the day. And then um, there was an upper level where the family would stay and they would have a guest room for people that were guests. And it was very um, important to those uh, people at the time to be hospitable. In fact, there's great curses in the Bible upon people that are not hospitable. There's no way that a pregnant woman was stuck in a, in a stable to have a baby. Uh, that just didn't happen. That's, that's an insult on the Middle Eastern culture. Uh, they... Uh, uh, she she started to have the baby and she had the baby and they, there was no room in the upper room in the in the guest room because there was a lot of people in Bethlehem at the time because they were there to pay a tax and that's the other thing I want to get to. Um, this is not a refugee story. This is like you going to your hometown and staying at your parents' house. Um, they were there because they were being forced by the government to pay a tax. And so, if anything, this is not a refugee story. This is a taxation story which doesn't fit your narrative uh, if you're posting this, that Jesus was a refugee because you or an illegal immigrant. Uh, you can't be an illegal immigrant into your hometown when you're going there commanded by the government to go pay a tax. And so it just doesn't work. It's, a, it's an idiotic uh, fallacy, and it's, it's, it's ridiculous. Uh, now, Jesus was a, um, a refugee in Egypt. This was about two years later. And we know this because, oh, and by the way, when, when, when Jesus was born, there were no kings there. There was no three kings coming from the east. We have no idea. You know, that didn't happen until he was nearly two years old. And uh, they weren't kings as far as we know. They were, they were the magi. They were wise men. They were mathematicians and astro astronomers. Um, and, and it took him about two years to get there. So he was about two years old. And we know this because uh, uh, Herod inquired of the Magi uh, how old the um, Messiah would be. And they said about two years old. And so then he put out a decree to kill all the male babies two years and under. And it was at this decree when Joseph was warned of an angel to take young Jesus and flee to Egypt. So he was a, a refugee in Egypt. However... The refugee narrative doesn't work for you here either if you're on the left and you're using this for that purpose because it's a killing baby story. It's, a, it, it's about how it's not a good idea to kill babies. So, um, and uh, being a refugee in Egypt, there were very strict rules for refugees, both in Israel or immigrants, both in Israel and in Egypt. You had to live by the rules and the laws of the land. Uh, you generally had to register uh, to uh, let the, the local magistrates know that you were there. And you, of course, didn't get a driver's license and you didn't get to vote. So it, does, it does, doesn't meet your narrative. And this is not some opinion that I'm spouting because I'm pro or anti-immigration or anything because I, don't, I haven't commented on that. I'm just telling you you're using the story and it's not in your best interest. You're using it incorrectly <laughs> and it's not in your best interest. So I just wanted to make this uh, to explain to some people. Maybe you can use this and post it on some, you know, these memes going around about Jesus being a refugee in Bethlehem, and uh, kind of hopefully maybe stop a little bit of the nonsense. So I promise to do it. Here it is. Hope you enjoy. Talk to you later.